cut the TV down. They don't need to be this loud. What's going on, y'all? I want to talk to you about some stuff. And, and it's been on my heart, so I want to speak on it. <clears throat> All right. Um, good evening. I hope everybody's doing amazing. Um, I am... I've been speaking to my brother about making a declaration of my experience. Um, what I experienced with certain powers that be that were moving inappropriately. And I really, like it's in my bone marrow to discuss that because Thankfully, God built me the way that he built me, but I, I'm not sure, you know, based on this person's claims and, and brags um, that he's literally got. At the same time this person was sexually, sexually harassing me for years. Um... He was claiming, you know, that he had multiple young black men on the payroll and they just had to show up when he was, when he requested them to be there. And clearly that's why it was, it felt to him that it was okay to say these things. And I, I really, I wanna have these discussions. I wanna be transparent with y'all about that. I've done my best to forgive this person, but it happens, it happens. Um, it's not just women that have to deal with it, but it's also men sometimes. And it'll be men tempting men. And that's why a lot of my posts over the last few years have been about taking the scenic route, you know, taking the long way around because if that means that you can carry your integrity with you, then, and it's 11-11. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another opportunity to connect with you. Um, please forgive my sins, my shortcomings, my bad decisions, and my mistakes. Um, please continue to guide and protect us as only you can. Everybody that's watching, um, it's not a presentation. If I see 1111, I try to have another conversation with God. So thank you, Heavenly Father. I appreciate you. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Um, that's interesting. But there are, there are um, people that will... And have, and will continue to, unfortunately, offer these things. And some of them are your heroes. Some of them are people who y'all like, oh yeah, such and such is amazing, and he does this, and he does that. Yeah, but he also does this and that. I, um, at some point soon, it's going to have to come out. <clears throat> I've kept one of these on me since 05. Um, whether it's a keychain recorder or a pen, because most predators would check your phone. And, Once the sexual harassment started, I was like, well, I need to, I, I got to protect me because I'm saying no. And I don't want this person as powerful as they are to try to get in the way of my work. So I started recording. So I have them offering me money to take my clothes off. 
I have recordings when I wasn't working with them or for them. Um, I have recordings of them confessing that, you know, the other guys that they have on the payroll, all of the above. Um, and the difference is, the wonderful thing about confidentiality agreements and non-disclosure agreements is that they can't prevent you from turning all of those things over to the police because sexual harassment is a crime. Attempted sexual assault is a felony. And Tams, you literally just asked, why do we as black people have to deal with that? But sometimes it's our own people. Sometimes it's our own heroes. It's the, sometimes it's the very people we deify. And we look up like, oh, they're doing so much. They're doing so much. No, they're also doing this. And my only reservation about naming the people, you know, there was directors along the way like, hey, you know, you read for this, that, and the other. You want to come back up to the apartment? I'm like, nah, I'm good. You got my headshot, my resume, and I'm good. You know if I can handle that or not. You know I can kill that. But I'm not, I don't need to come up to your apartment. We already had the audition. There's other people that I want to say everything. And my brother was like, nah, not yet. I want to tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. I want to speak on it. And the good news is that they don't even have to believe me. Hopefully they would, but even if they don't, they can hear this person. Since sexual harassment started, I've carried many recorder devices on me. Keychains, pens, um, thumb drives with a, a charged battery that get six, seven, eight hours, all the above. So I have the conversations. I really want to air that, that shit out because it bothers me when I'm alone at night. Like, man, they, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way in which this person moves. And the way that, you know, predators resent the prey that gets away. So... When you don't say yes, when you don't say, okay, I'll acquiesce and, you know, sign up and literally and figuratively play ball, because we're not doing that, they resent you. This is a conversation we're going to have and we're going to have soon, because... It, it bothers me in my spirit that you can, I can forgive people. That's one thing. But, yeah, P, we don't play ball. That's my brother in there. Um, and he knows the real deal. He knows the who. Um, I'm good. Somebody said, you don't look okay. I'm okay. I'm, I, I, have, I have peace. I'm literally strategically planning my next eight moves. I'm good. God got me because he was watching when I was offered these opportunities and I didn't say yes. I didn't sell my soul or my ass. Excuse my French, y'all. I know some of y'all, hopefully y'all don't have no kids around, but I didn't sell nothing for success. It's like, nah, that's not what I want. You know, I I ain't into that. I ain't into dudes. It's, it's, I'm the, I got an only beard in the bed policy. Mine is the only beard in the bed. Yeah, we not, we ain't doing none of that. I don't, I don't get out like that. And these people kept on for years. Sexual harassment is a crime. Attempted sexual assault is a felony. And where I'm at now is that 
in the middle of the night, I think about if I'm brave enough to name the person. I'll take a polygraph live. I'll take five polygraphs live. And I'll pass all of them because it's the truth. This person is a predator and he's one of several. Um, and it's a shame, man. But it's, I think it's time. It's, I want to, and I know, P, I know you're on here. I want to say everything now. And I have proof. It's not like I'm just making false accusations. I intentionally let the statute of limitations expire. It's not about money, but. I'm going to take, I'm going to have to take the receipts, the recordings down to the police department and let them hear this individual. I wasn't working for him in the month and the year that he showed up to my apartment and offered me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. He said, I don't even need to touch you. I just want to see you naked. I declined. Because again, scenic group, I got my integrity with me. I'll, I'll take the long way around. But being that I wasn't working with him and we were in my apartment. He had visited my apartment to offer me a job of this fall because the lead of this particular project was going to do something else, so he needed another lead. I recorded it because I didn't trust him, and I had told him over and over, and he still always tried shit, just tried shit. So if people don't believe me, they can hear him in his voice. I have always kept something on me. Always, even if my phone is off. Something else is if I'm around somebody that has tried to sexually harass me, pressure me, intimidate me into some nonsense, I've always kept something on me so I can protect myself because if they're that powerful and they feel that entitled, then they, they can also try to get in the way of your work. Um, I want to speak on it. I also want to keep making great things and, and creating jobs and opportunities. But Oh, no, I got backups for the backups for the backups for the backups. I've watched way too many Jason Bourne movies not to have 15 backups. I can press play and you can hear the person and you'll know immediately who the person is that's offering me a hundred grand to strip. You'll know right away and it'll break your heart. I won't have to say the person's name, but I can and I will. I don't mind doing a polygraph or three or five on live TV and I'll pass all of them because it's the truth. This industry is something else. It's wonderful and we get to chase our dreams and we get to live other lives. I get to be a judge or an FBI agent. I get to be a, a girl dad. And some of the people that you think are your mentors are literally and figuratively just trying to fuck you. I have documentation from the dealership for the car that 
they tried to buy as an apology for offering me a hundred grand a strip. It's it's time. I really I really want to just clear the air because I'm I'm tired. And then where I'm at now. It's if it still feels like that person is fucking with you just to fuck with you, just to mess with you. The industry can be wonderful. I'm grateful. Be clear that this person showed me how not to be. When I'm a boss, people get daps and church hugs. The attractive women that work on, on even even on my shows, my my productions. They getting daps and church hugs. That's it. Because this person showed me how not to be when I'm in charge and when I built something and when I created something. I hear you, Purnell. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to dial it back. You get on my nerves because I know you're right, but I'm, it, it's in my fucking bone marrow and I'm tired of this person gallivanting around doing these PR stunts Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. Well, then speak on. If you want to have. Woo! We're going to have a conversation, y'all, really soon. Really, really soon. Really soon. And I'm, I, I thank God that he made me the way that I am. Because I know he sat back and watched. Like, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to acquiesce and take this movie that's going to make 60, 70, 80 million dollars? Are you going to take this, this picture? Are you going to go to that late night audition? That late night table read? No. You ain't built me like that. I meant beat, shot at, stomped out more than most of the people that are here on this live put together. P, I'm going to call you in a minute. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to air it out, but I'm so fucking close because I'm tired. I'm tired. And it needs to be told. And the bad part is I'm going to be I'm going to be painted as the villain when I was the one that was sexually harassed for years, years, bullied, intimidated, and sexually harassed for years. And I'm going to be painted as the villain because y'all have deified this person. And then if a person tells you over and over, First of all, in general, you have no right to touch anybody. None. None. Now, that's why I'm careful. Like when I do my shows and everything, you know, it says church hugs. I put the veils on and I I kiss people on the hair up here. Nothing sexual, nothing weird, nothing crazy. And, And I'm trusting that, you know, the fans will receive that out of a place of love and connection. But you are not allowed to touch somebody without their permission. Not allowed to try to touch them in a sexual or private place without their permission. And if they've already declared like, hey, bruh, I get that that's your thing, but I like black women in Hennessy. And so miss me with the bullshit because I'm never going to be open to that. I'm never going to swing at that pitch like I, I'm batting for this team over here. God made ovaries and fallopian tubes and vagina, labia majora, labia minora, uterus. This is wonderful over here. So I'm going to stay over here, like chill. And then this person still tries to grab you, physically grab you. Cassie speaking out has given me has reminded me about not not just me because it was brutal going through it because it lasted for years but her speaking out P 
people need to know. And the funny thing is, predators like that, they resent the prey that got away. They resent the prey that got away. The prey that didn't fold. The prey that didn't acquiesce and and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and take this L and sacrifice my morals for this opportunity. Nah. That was around the time that I was considering going back to Michigan. 08, 09. Because work was slow and the work that was coming was was offered with a side of penis. And yeah, that don't do nothing for me. I'm bad for your whole team. So, um, yeah, I, at some point soon, I've spoken with my attorney trying to figure out how to deal with it. It's never been about money. I, I literally intentionally let the statute of limitations pass. It's not about money or being able to sue. But at some point, really soon, the police report is going to be filed and I'll turn over the recordings of the inappropriate behaviors and the inappropriate offers and I'll turn over the paperwork for the car that was bought as an apology for offering me $100,000 to take my clothes off. And y'all can hear him. His voice is very distinctive. And I want to I wanna empty, I'm tired of carrying this shit. There's a reason now why I fight more than ever when somebody wrongs me and why I almost too aggressively speak up is because I wasn't brave enough to then. And I, I regret not being able to be strong enough and I resent that part of me that wasn't strong enough to speak up about it. It's taking everything in me not to air out everything and put all the recordings online, put all the paperwork and the PDFs online. Uh, there's no reason that this person's company would be on the bill of sale for a vehicle unless it's right after the timestamp recording of him offering me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. He said, I don't have to touch you. I just want to see you naked. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Like, you know, I'm not into that. I don't, I don't fuck around like that. I don't do that. What the fuck? What? Leave. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Get out. I thought you were my brother and my friend. And this definitely has nothing to do with my brother who's in here. Be clear. I thought this person was a brother type figure, a mentor, mentor type figure. But for you to continuously throw these opportunities, you know good and damn well, all it ever was, was you pretending to be a mentor trying to get some ass. That'll never happen. I don't bat for that team. Yeah, but I gotta get off of here and talk to my brother because I'm I'm so fucking close to just airing everything out. I'm just dumping everything online in the morning. I'm tired, man. I'm not forgiving myself. I didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't brave enough back then because somebody said, forgive yourself. KG... It's, it's heavy on my heart, man, and I'm tired. And we around here deifying people that go out and do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to pay off this, and I'm going to pay off that, and I'm going to pay off that. But at the same time, these same people are predators. I'm not... blaming myself for saying no 
I'm not blaming myself for almost quitting acting. I'm just mad at me for not being brave enough to say something sooner. That's the only thing that I regret. I wish I'd have been brave enough. I'm him now. I'm bra I, I know who I am. I know who God built me to be. And I'm not afraid of those consequences. My concern is that a lot of y'all are going to be like, man, And your immediate reaction is going to be like, oh, well, we got to protect our deity. We got to protect. It, it's going to have to happen. I'm interested to see which peers are mad at me because it may interfere with their work. But, yeah. You get a grown ass man that knows that you're heterosexual and you're sleeping off Hennessy in his guest room because he says it's safe because you know I know I'm bent so I don't after a big party won't say what type won't say where I'm sleep I'm, I'm gone because I'm four five Hennessy's deep and not short Hennessy's either and this dude tries to climb into bed with you. So you spaz out, push him out, like, what the fuck? Get ready to leave. He apologizes. Blame it on the alcohol. And you try to forgive him. So you're like, all right, man. All right, I'm gone. You shake his hand on the way out, and he tries to grab your penis. He tries to shake and grab your equipment. And you spaz even more. I'm like, what the fuck you doing, man? What the fuck you, what the fuck? Oh, my bad, my bad. My... So you go to leave. He tries to do it again. Now, at that point, my only regret is not breaking multiple bones in this person's face. Like beating the dog shit out of this person, right? Because that's available to me at all times. That inner grizzly bear is always available, but in the moment, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And one of the but you got a guy that's a billionaire and I got three grand in my bank account. Who are you going to believe? Right? I got that three grand. That's my son's mom's rent for next month. You know, got to make sure little man's taken care of. That's my rent. And that's a little bit for the gas tank and the rest of it, I can go to the dollar store and get some bread and bologna and hot dogs and mustard and, and you know, I can get by. Work was slow and a lot of the work that was coming was, it had penis attached to it. I'm like, fuck that, man, I'm not, that's not what I want, that's not what I'm about to do. I regret not speaking up then, not being brave enough to, and I regret not hurting this person because I'm a, I'm a, I got a big heart. Mother had a big heart. Mother's heart was as big as Flint, Michigan. She was like a little, little, little yellow boy. You finna come and you gonna be a part of my family. And I always try to think about things, you know, and not lash out, even though I wanted to, even though I want to. I'm mad at me for not hitting him. I'm mad at me for not speaking up and saying something. Because between that year and now, how many young black actors have fell for that? How many of them, and you can hear him say it on, on you can hear him on the, on the conversations. You can hear them on the conversations. 
you can hear him say that he has several guys, multiple guys on payroll, six figures a year that pop up and they do whatever he wants and they go back home. So they pop in, they grab their ankles, they do whatever he wants. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking do that. I'm not doing that. I don't want to make it that bad. I want to be able to shave in the fucking morning without any grief or any regret or any shame waiting for me in the mirror. There's a trauma that comes with being bullied and intimidated and sexually harassed like that. And the bad part is when the truth comes out, a lot of y'all in here are going to be like, man, I don't believe it. And you can watch me on whatever news station. I'll take polygraphs live on TV. You can hear the recordings yourself. Person has a very distinctive voice when they offer me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. Person has a very distinguished voice, distinctive voice when they literally sexually assault me and try to grab my private parts and I'm blocking their hand like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, oh, my bad, my bad. And tries to do it again. Some of these people are y'all heroes. Some of these people y'all have deified and set up on a stool or on a stoop. It's taking everything in me not to say. But I promise you this. I will promise you this. As an executive on the show, I'm grateful for this person for showing me how not to be. When you're the boss, how not to be. You don't sexually harass your employees. You don't pressure them, bully them, try to intimidate them into what you want. I'm, I am grateful for that lesson. I'm glad that God sat back because not only was he watching to see if I was the person that he thought he had made, but he was letting me see who I am. And I'm grateful for it. Because it let me know and that, and that gave me a lot of my bravery. I'm, I thank God that he just sat back and watched. It's going to be a conversation really soon. And it won't be a conversation or accusations. Again, I literally, I let the statute of limitations run out. It's never been about money. My concern is that this person is still doing it. Um, still a predator. And that's not okay. And I wish I was brave enough to speak up back then. I was worried that he would get in the way and, and try to interfere with my work and, and try to blackball me because he couldn't ball me. Pun intended. It's going to be a conversation had real soon. The beauty of non-disclosure agreements is that <clears throat> even if you do sign them, you can't speak about certain things, but confidentiality agreements don't, after speaking with several attorneys, they do not prohibit you. They can't prevent you from going to police departments and reporting sexual harassment and giving them your receipts, giving them your recordings, giving them your PDFs. And they don't prevent you from reporting felonies. Sexual harassment is a felony. If you tell a person, if you tell a whole grown man, like, hey, I ain't into dudes. Yeah, y'all shut the fuck up. 
You tell a grown man, I'm not into guys, and he, he tries to grab your private parts. Not once, but twice. After trying to climb into bed with you. That is the legal definition of sexual assault. So, yeah. And no, I didn't see that documentary. Yeah, NDA and, and confidentiality agreement do not cover crimes and they don't prevent you from taking all your evidence to the police and then there's a public record. So at some point really soon, this is gonna have to ha this is a conversation is gonna have to happen because it's fucking with me. It's bothering me. And it, it needs to happen. Y'all gonna be disappointed in who it is because y'all been fooled for years. But it's gonna have to happen. Yeah, exactly. You said it. No means no. If I got multiple friends in the industry that are LGBTQ plus, I've had drinks with a castmate and his boyfriend. I don't give a fuck who they sleeping with. I don't give a flying fuck at a rolling donut who these people are sleeping with. How do you treat me as a human being? That's what matters to me. That'll that'll be the only thing that affects how I treat you. If you're, if you're respectful of my boundaries, then I can have a drink with you and your girlfriend or you and your boyfriend. I don't care. I don't have heaven to send you to when you leave here. That's God's job to judge you. But what we're not going to do, yeah, we're not going to try to force. Nah, man. It's taking... It's taken everything in me not to air that out. Everything. I've been carrying this with me for a decade and a half. More. I'm going I'm to get off of that subject. It's, it's going to be addressed, and it's going to be addressed soon. And if anybody has a problem with me telling the truth about predators in this industry, then they are truly part of the problem. And I'll say that out front, so that way when certain people who are worried about their work that are tied to this person or whatever, it's because they're selfish and they're worried about work. You can't treat people like that. And when when I'm the boss, when I'm CEO, when I'm when I can make any TV show and film that I want, people are gonna be able to come work with me and know that they don't have to worry about bullshit. They don't have to worry about opportunities being tied to sexual favors. They won't have to worry about being sexually harassed and intimidated and bullied because they didn't acquiesce to the sexual harassment or the attempted sexual assault or any of that. They're going to be able to show up and work and create amazing and great stuff without that. I was... I was on a show, and if I had done what this actress did, just switching lanes, if I had done what she did, I'd never work again and I'd be in jail. She used to come up and pat me on the jump, like pat my penis, like, ooh, okay, I see that print. And I checked her, I grabbed her hand right away, checked her, like, what, what the fuck are you doing? I didn't okay, I'll do that shit, I'm going to jail. What are you doing? She did it again. Grabbed her hand. I was like, stop. That shit ain't funny. We're preparing for a scene. She walks past, cups my equipment, and was like, oh, you got some girth. When I tell you 
had the, one had that been a dude that a punched her, punched them in a motherfucking mouth. If I behaved like this woman, this particular actress had done in that moment, I'd be in jail. I'd be canceled and I would never fucking work again. You don't get to walk past somebody and be like, oh, that's nice. And pat them on a fucking private. What I get to call my job is a blessing and I love it. And I'm grateful to God about it. Nah, that absolutely wasn't Cheryl Pepsi Riley. Please don't do that. That's, that's my heart. I love her to the moon and back. She's a consummate professional. It was another, another pro, it was a TV and film project. And she felt entitled to do that bullshit. Now, had I said something and she was higher than me on the call sheet, they would have just wrote me out. I'd have died. I told you, Miguel. They'd have wrote my character out and killed them off or whatever. And you're like, okay, boom, this is my, this is a series regular. I'm one, two, three on the call sheet. Um, but that's not okay. It's not okay. Y'all wonder why I stay in my fucking dressing room while we on set. Because it's, it's bullshit out there. And it's people that don't appreciate and aren't there to honor the opportunity that we have. They're just doing whatever. Whatever they want to. Whatever they feel entitled to. Imagine a man walking past a woman saying, tapping, saying, I see that print. That print poking through. I'm going to jail that very day. But she can do it and continue to work in this industry. And if I report her to the female executives that were on that particular show, it's going to get swept under a rug because they had already told me, you know, just Christian, just, just stand here and be, be pretty. Just stand here and look pretty. While I'm asking about certain things in the scene so I can make it make sense to me intellectually. Just just stand there and be pretty. So, of course, I can't trust. Um, P, give me a minute. Chill out, I'm, I'm venting. Of course, I can't trust them. Stand there and be pretty. That's that bullshit that men told women for decades. So why the entire fuck is that okay for you to say that to me when I'm asking you the history of a particular scene so I can make it make sense to me honestly here. So that way when the words exit my spirit, it's honest. A few people calling me right now because they're probably seeing this and they're wondering if I'm actually going to tip the can over and I want to. I fucking want to so bad because I'm, I'm tired of carrying it. I'm tired of carrying and having to deal with the bully and the harassment. Years. Not one, not two, not three, more. Years of sexual harassment and attempted sexual assault. And I want to air that shit out so bad. I'm having a night, clearly. Um, pretty boys deserve the same respect as the block button. Go fuck yourself. I'm a grown ass man. I'm 48. Ain't no, I'm not a pretty boy. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? Okay, some people can hear me. 
can you good yeah it's not yeah it's, and if you know me then you know i'm a grown man don't call me pretty boy that's some bullshit so yeah i just i needed to vent and get some of this out of my system because there's, there's a vitriol that you carry when you deal with this and there's a trauma that comes with it because you never know like, okay, is this meeting legit? Or is this some bullshit? Is this another one of those meetings where you meet with uh, a black billionaire businessman and while my, while my manager is there, everything is everything. I, you know, I got my Kinko's presentation with the plastic cover on it. It's, it's, I pay good money on this. Like good money. I'm running it down like you can invest in this, that, and the other. So my manager leaves, he moves into a conference room. And I'm like, okay, it's a conference room. Nothing sketchy about this. Didn't realize that the doors on the side of the conference room right there led into his suite. So about eight or ten minutes, I'm nervous in my phone. I'm like, okay, what the fuck what is okay you changing you got to use the bathroom is a number two cool he comes back in in silk pajamas silk robe right as they're delivering strawberries and champagne like this is pretty woman or a fucking date now i'm like wait whoa uh-uh this ain't that this I'm not him and this ain't that. I'd love for you to invest in my company. He probably should have because he would own a piece of all the Queens man. The the books I've already sold, the six or eight books I'm about to release, all of that. He would have had a piece of, of all of that monetarily, but he didn't. He was thinking with his dick. And yeah, he came back in, grabbed a strawberry, sat down, and I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm, you got my presentation, I'm gone. He's like, are you sure? I said, yeah. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. He's like, are you sure? That second, are, are you sure, means if you don't stay and do what I want, you're not going to get what you're hoping for. Now, this particular guy is out here Paying tuition for entire classes of HBCUs after this sketchy shit. Want to air him out too. I'm just tired of carrying this bullshit with me. I'm tired. There's There are wolves in the hen house. And... Yeah, it's disappointing because you're like, you know, okay, well, I want to learn from this person or I want to learn from this person or maybe partner with this person over here because he's investing in black companies, not knowing that he's a predator. And this person who's supposed to be your manager is the worst predator of all. It's got to come out at some point. So um, just, yeah, you carry shit and it gets heavy. I'm gonna call my brother back. Um, I'm so fucking close to tipping a glass over and just letting the marbles roll wherever they go because I'm tired of carrying it. And it would be easier to just file that police report, name that person for attempted sexual assault, name that person for sexual harassment for years, turn over the evidence, and then let the world hear him offer me 100 grand to take my clothes off. Thank God he made me the way I am. And I could say no. I was broke as fuck. When I tell you, I would have loved that hundred grand. I wasn't finna sell my soul. Oh, wow. Warriors. You talking about the basketball game? Let me go ahead and get you this block button. You can fight with that, warrior. I'm going to log off before I spill this shit, man, and, and fuck up y'all year.
fuck up 2024. Because if you think that Diddy shit was crazy, you don't even know. I'm going to get up on out of here. But this conversation is going to happen. I'm going to head down there. I've already been down to the... I, I stopped in the parking lot once. And the other time I made it into the lobby of the police station to file it. And my computer with me and all the, uh, all the recordings. Like I said, when the sexual harassment started, I started carrying... I carried a keychain. I carried... Multiple pens. Sometimes they only lasted two, no, three or four hours. Sometimes you had to pull like a, put like a AAA battery in them. But you can hear these offers from the person who made the offer. And I, I suggest that too. That's why I'm cautious too. When people email my manager or my booking agent or whoever, like, hey, I want Christian to be my mentor. I'm afraid to mentor anybody. Um, on set, if you're working, we're working on a project together or you're working on a project I created, ask me what you want to ask me. But individually, separately, I'm afraid because of the bullshit that I had to deal with. And you got these predator still running around still fucking over people still screwing people over and I'm a, at some point at some point soon I'm gonna air this shit out you just gotta ask yourself are you ready because y'all deified some of these people y'all made them almost I said what I have with recordings you just said don't say what you have with I have all of it Layered and stacked and proof. You're allowed to record yourself when you feel unsafe. I have all of it. I have all of the inappropriate moments and offers and bullshit. I'm not sorry. Don't say that. I'm with the shit. I'm just, I'm tired of carrying it. I saw what they did to Terry Crews when he didn't say anything. And... Yeah, like that doesn't make it comfortable for you to be like, man, I really want to tell the truth about this because I'm sure this this person is still out here doing the same thing. And if not, what has he done over the last 15 years? <laughs> Excuse me. I usually sneeze. Sorry, I have allergies. I usually sneeze twice. Um, what has this person done over the years with other people? When he's on recording, talking about how he's got multiple guys on payroll for six figures a year to pop up and hold their ankles. This conversation is going to have to happen. And the drop off at the police station is going to have to happen. And y'all going to be disappointed. And... That's the bad part. Because a lot of y'all going to be like, man, no, not him. Yeah, him. And I can be on the news taking a polygraph, which I will, gladly. And I'll pass everyone. And some of y'all are still won't believe it. Stop deifying these entertainers. We just human, but some of us are a little more human than others. And some of us actually give a fuck about the people that we work with, the people that we affect, the people that we have an opportunity to create an opportunity for. I love the fact that God let me create a show and there's 150 or 200 people working every single season. That lets me know I'm in my purpose. I don't love the fact that he sat back and let me go through that mess. But I appreciate the fact that he built me strong enough to pass on those opportunities to sell my soul or a body part. 
Take the scenic route. Take the long way around. Uh, I'm gonna have to air these um, these recordings and this information out soon because I'm I'm tired of carrying it, man. It's heavy, and I just want to create great shit and great opportunities, and I want beautiful people, women and men, to be able to show up on set and not feel like they gotta do something to earn their spot. You're talented and you work hard. You already earned your spot. What I learned from the bullshit was walk away from anything that doesn't serve you or anything that's going to cost me my spirit and my soul. And it's not easy. But it's, it's possible. It's doable. It's possible. Walk away. Godfrey, I appreciate you, brother, man. I... Most people who know me know me don't even know most of this shit. It's like five people on earth know this, know the stuff that I I dealt with. I told my mother, my grandmother, I told my oldest brother who's in here somewhere trying to make he's trying to make sure I don't jump off the side of the mountain and tell everything. I want to so fucking bad because I'm tired of carrying it. No, this too shall not pass. This person has done this for person after person after person. This too shall not pass. It needs to be addressed. So, um, yeah, this conversation is going to happen. It's going to happen soon. I'm just trying to figure out when. But it, it needs to happen. Like I said, I don't. you don't have to believe me. You can hear this person in his very distinctive voice. Once the sexual harassment started, I have kept one of these on me. It's a recording. I've kept one of them on me for 18 years. So, it's time. I'm tired. I'm tired of carrying that around. I feel like an additional, like two additional 45 pound plates that I don't need to carry. I'm tired. So, um, I'm going to call my brother, ease his mind, because I know he's uh, worried I'm about to, about to air it out over here. It just, I was thinking and my spirit was uneasy and I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. Yeah. Some of your heroes, some of your very heroes are taking advantage of people. And I'm grateful to learn that lesson because that way when I'm in a space to where I'm the boss and I'm making decisions and I'm, I'm an executive producer now on my show. I can go around and make sure that I, you know, everybody gets a handshake, a dab, a fist bump, or a church hug, but nobody feels like I felt. I can make sure of that. And it's please and thank you. Yes, please. Uh, and thank you. It's all that. All that. Everybody gets treated like the CEO. Being treated like somebody's goal of a piece of ass. Somebody pretending to be your friend, pretending to be a, a mentor or an older brother figure when ultimately their goal was just some ass. That shows you how not to be when you're in charge. So I'm grateful for those lessons learned. Um, we're going to continue this conversation and we're going to continue it soon. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of carrying this. And I know there's others. I know. I feel bad for those dudes that actually said yes. I hit you, Miguel. I hit you after I hit my brother. I feel bad for them. Because they fell for the pressure. They fell for the opportunity. They're somewhere, you know, working a low-end job. And somebody comes in with this money. And they're like, okay, well, maybe just this once. I guarantee you, 
there's a bunch of them that are going to come out. But I'm glad I didn't sell my soul or my ass. I deserve to be here. I earned it. I wrote it. I showed up on these shows and was professional and punctual and prepared and treated everybody there like the CEO. Yes, please. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everything. Because I'm not as a facade. I'm grateful to be here. I love what I do. But when they poison the well with this bullshit, man. I never, the reason, one of the biggest reasons I never wanted to say anything is because I didn't want to be the person that broke your heart. I didn't want to be the person that said that your hero, such and such, sexually harassed me for years and tried to sexually assault me. Tried. We're going to continue this conversation at some point soon. It's got to happen. So, but it's traumatic when you deal with that bullshit for years. Years of that bullshit. Years of pressure. Years of intimidation. Years of sideways comments and uh, insults and everybody else getting a raise, everybody else getting a vacation, everybody else getting uh, to be a part of this new show or this new thing, but because you ain't playing ball, literally and figuratively. I hear you, KG. I'm signing off. I've done enough. I'm, I'm tiptoeing on the fucking edge. It's Dirty Diana and I'm leaning over. I'm going to go, y'all, before I say too much. But, yeah, no, I'm not. Thank you, God, for not making me the kind of man that's going to fuck his way to the middle. Thank you. Thank you for standing back and letting both of us see who I am and who you built. I'm going to keep making shows and keep making films and make sure that people on my productions aren't sexually harassed and bullied and intimidated and they don't have to deal with attempted sexual assault or inappropriate bullshit. I got you. Thank you for making me the way you made me. I'm gonna go, because I'm gonna say some shit. Um, no, I just prayed, but you know me. Let me call my brother and I gotta call Miguel and, and uh, check in with KG. I love and appreciate y'all, man. This shit just gets heavy sometimes. Life be life and but you carry something like this and then you got to deal with somebody and they floating in your face gloating about this or that or this or that. Like, motherfucker, you, you do remember. You do know the terror that you exacted upon me and multiple people for fucking years. I'm a skate. Um, but it's it's... The conversation is going to be had. I guess you yeah, just got to figure out if you're going to accept the truth about one of your deities or not. Because it's the truth. And if I take a polygraph on TV in front of you, you'll know it. And if you hear him offering me inappropriate opportunities, you'll know it. And if you choose not to believe it, then it's on you. But it's got to be dealt with. It's, it's got it's, it's time. I love and appreciate y'all. I'm gonna get out of here before I actually spill it.